Clinton. She joins us now from Jacksonville, Florida. It might be tough to make the case for arming and indeed supporting uh, an opposition group in Libya who may not even advance the U.S.'s strategic interests if they win. That's right. These are, none of these are, are easy questions, and, and that's why you're not hearing anyone saying that we are going to arm them. It may come to that. I think they're still hoping that Gaddafi will give up and flee. Uh, the U.N. resolution clearly says all necessary means to support the civilians. It may come to that, but they're not there yet. Uh, that's a questionable point. I mean, even the French admit, even though they might consider it, as far as they were concerned, arming the rebels goes against Resolution 1973. We know what the Russians will say as well. I mean, at the very least, it's up for debate and might need another Security Council resolution, which the U.S. might not even get. Or they might just decide to do it quietly. Right, but then doesn't the president lose all the legitimacy he claimed in his speech on, on Monday night? The whole point was this was an international alliance with UN backing. That all falls apart if you start arming the rebels. We'll see. Uh, the beauty of these resolutions is they're vague. Uh, they are vague for a reason so that everyone can agree. And there will be disagreements all along the way. It may be that some uh, will drop out of the coalition if we decide to do it. We may do it covertly where we never have to admit that we're doing it in order to hold the coalition together. Um, lots of ways to frame it. Uh, the re UN resolution is centered in protecting civilians. We could do it simply to say we're protecting them from attacks on Gaddafi. We're only giving them defensive weapons, not uh, heavy aircraft, uh, stinger missiles and tanks, but simply things to defend themselves. It's possible you could hold together a coalition on that front, but none of these steps are easy, and you're going to have a lot of discussions and arguments. And, you know, the coalition won't hold together on every piece, but I think it will remain largely intact so long as Gaddafi is in power. But you have, you realize that arguably you've just completely undercut the president's speech, a very noble speech about humanitarian intervention and international law and so forth by even saying, well, you know, frankly, let's face it, in the end we can do whatever we want. No, that's not true at all. Um, if you want to have other people go with us, um, you want to have a strong coalition. Uh, President Obama has made it clear that we'll be there in the beginning to get it up and running, but we're going to be handing the no-fly zone off to NATO. We do not want to be in the forefront of this, um, of, of this mission. The, the, the single mission that the U.N. Uh, authorized was to protect civilians, and President Obama has been leading that charge. He's already prevented uh, many, many deaths through that leadership. He'll continue to do so, and having an international coalition uh, to do that is key. Uh, and he will continue to have that coalition in the def definition of defending civilians. He's also made it very clear that U.S. policy is that Gaddafi's time is up and he should leave. And there's a whole separate track, too, on trying to increase the pressure on Obama and we're on, on uh, Gaddafi. And we're not shy at all about doing that. Uh, perhaps with a coalition of the willing in a separate track. I, I mean, I guess part of the confusion is, I mean, a question was raised at the press conference in London. There was a lot of attention to about Khalifa Hifter, who's now one of the senior commanders on the opposition. Some are suggesting he might be a CIA uh, asset, and I'm sure no one really knows the answer to that, at least in public at the moment. But is it unreasonable to assume that no matter how humanitarian and, and benevolent the intentions may have been, the U.S. is now trying to alter the opposition to its liking, at least to ensure its strategic interests will be met in the, in, in the case of their victory? Well, you normally try and encourage the ones who share your views to the, to the forefront of this, but we've also been very clear that we are controlling them because we didn't create these rebels. We're not exactly sure who they are, but we are sure that they have the right not to be killed by Gaddafi. We're going to help protect them in that. And beyond that, how do you get past Gaddafi? How do you get a democracy going? How do you build a stable Libya after that? Frankly, there's no playbook on all this, and we're taking it day by day, trying to hold the coalition together. But first and foremost is the goal of protecting civilians, and that is what the UN's authorized. That's what the no-fly zone is doing, and that's what Obama has been leading to save lives on the ground in Libya. And there, that there's unity on. Beyond that, you're going to have arguments every step of the way. Ambassador, thank you very much. My pleasure. And that's all for the moment from here in Washington.